What's up everybody, it's Troy here. Welcome back to another cast of the Rise of Witch King, patch 2.2 version 6. Today we have a 2v2 on the map Buckland, but this is the random teams version, which is a custom map actually. But it's just Buckland. But you end up with random teams, so... I guess uh, they didn't choose their teams. So we have our first player, Aber, as the Isengard player in the top left. And his opponent, or his ally for this match, is Samurai. So I would assume they got these teams randomly. Samurai and Aber together, since they played this map. Who knows? And the opposing team, we have Platt as Mordor. And the other player is Tico as Goblins. Cool. So we got a Goblin and a Mordor versus an Elf and an Aizen. Interesting. Alright, good. So we have no mirrors. We have no doubles of any factions either, so that's always fun. Alright, I think Platt is Platino, if I'm not mistaken, but I'll just call him Platt, just in case it's not. Alright, we have Harajan Palace start going down for Platt, who's placed it very neatly tucked behind his slaughterhouse there. So that's good. We have his slaughterhouse is going up, of course. We have a spider pit start for Tico, who is going for spiderlings as his starting units. And then he will be harassing his opponents, I would imagine, quite fiercely with that. Aber is going for Rukai start. All right. You also notice there's a different icon there. That's because I'm using a alpha version of the Rise of the Witch King HD edition. So that is a thing. Thank you, Ryder, for providing me with that, of course, Ryder Rohan. So, uh, you'll notice some things are different, but that's what I'll be doing my casts from now on. On. So, there you go. Alright, so we have Lorian Archers coming out for uh, Samurai, who's getting also some Mythlon Sentries as well. Very good indeed. Right, so, we got some Easterlings out here. <clears throat> they combine both of their battalions on the south, you get a double war chance, which is very nice. And now it looks like Platt is going to take the outpost there. Of course, the goblins can't take the outpost with spider rings, because they cannot actually capture things. Oh, now we get to have the fancy Mythlon sentries on Rise of Witch King. Fantastic. Alright. Spiderling harass should be pretty strong here. Until they die, of course. Archers and pikemen are good against them, but of course... Both are hard to catch. These, the archers, are really going to be what's doing the damage to the spiderlings. In that capacity, right, we got Urukai crossbows. We got two battalions of Easterlings here on the offensive here against Abert. Who's also got a lumber mill. Looks like Platt is going to target the lumber mill. Oh, definitely a good call. Lumber mills will be getting quite a bit of income, so definitely want to get rid of that. I think. Yes, Eber has sent some troops down here as well. The Urkai Swordsmen. But it looks like they are being fended off by some Orc Warriors and some Spiderlings. So he should be able to, uh, to defend that nicely. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's so good. Also, don't ask me if the Rise of Witch King HD... Edition is available for download because it is not. Just just so you know. I'm putting that out there right now. I have a very early version of it. Alright, let's see what we got here. Samurai has got two battalions of Lorian archers. Some Mithlon sentries. Which is pretty decent. Two battalions of Mithlon sentries there. But he's being harassed. We got Goblin Warriors coming in. Trying to do some damage. He's also sent some spiderlings, although they are just sitting there tanking the arrow damage for no reason. Samurai is going to lose a couple farms here, no doubt. But that shouldn't set him back too much, I think. And he is building a fairly decent force as well, so once he actually pushes against the goblin player, Tico, he'll have a bit of a power there. Those goblin warriors not particularly great against elven armies, as you'll find. They die very rapidly to arrow fire. So that makes Lorian archers very good against them. Of course, there's Umbar orc archers. Out for Platt. Ever sent some pikes, some crossbows, and some swordsmen from the Urukai. Oh, he's utilizing fire bombs. Very nice. 
Firebombs are very destructive and underused. They do good damage. It's just in 2.2.6 they're a bit buggy with the range, the way they work. I believe that's being fixed for the next version, of course, though. As most things are. So that should be good. And you can fully utilize the, the terror of the firebomb. Although I don't know how strong it will be. Wow, everything looks so nice. Lovely. Of course, all these units, other than uh, Rise of the Witch King specific ones, are available in the HD edition of Beef Me 2. So, you can still get those. And look at those if you want. Maybe not Rise of the Witch King, but... If you play Beef Me 2, you can. I don't think we've even seen a unit that isn't in uh, Beef Me 2 yet, actually. We'd have to see a half-troll swordsman. Also, the version I have, everything is not done. It's the reason it's alpha. So not every unit is complete. Right, there's the boar chant down on some goblin warriors. They're going to do quite nicely against these mythlon sentries. We're going to say they look very good in, the, go in the, the red color. They look like they were meant to be red because of the hobbit armor look. I feel it goes nicely with them. Alright, we guess what do we got here? Orc archers, swordsmen, a couple of battalions of corsairs there. Ivor's got himself some pikes, crossbows, a couple of battalions of crossbows, some swordsmen. He's getting his economy rolling, he's getting more pikes out in the field. It looks like he's also got some urukai down here as well. Harassing at the farms and keeping a plat busy down there. A bit of engagement here. It looks like the elves are going up against Mordor and the goblins. I think the elves should be fine here, in theory. As long as these archers stay alive. Although these archers are a bit close for comfort considering how many uh, troops are near him, so maybe, maybe not. But there are some Mithlans sentries holding the ground, holding the line. All the archers pick everything off. In case you're somehow new to beef me too, or as the Witch King, porcupine formation for your uh, pikemen is very useful for just putting your guys in front, having them tank all the arrows or damage, because porcupine formation gives you increased armor, pretty good increased armor as well, and allows them to just sit there and tank the damage while your archers do the damage from the back. And the same goes for Urukai or anyone with a shield wall formation. You could do that as well. Put them in a whole ground stance and you'll have pretty good armor. It's definitely good to remember and utilize. Switching stances is actually very, very advisable. Like in scenarios. I tell you really min-max your damage and your defense and such. Is really utilize your stat, your uh, stances. Change your whole ground stance to aggressive stance when you're not being attacked and you just need your damage. Stuff like that. And there's Azog. Azog does not have a new model for as Witch King Edition as of yet. So he still looks like that little shit we all know and hate. <laughs> Alright, so what we get here. It's, I had a feeling this forward Horizon Palace might be a bit of a problem later on. That's the problem with putting your buildings too far forward. They're far much easily exposed to the things. There's the Wildman Summon. And that is the Wildman Summon from Tico. It's being slaughtered quite rapidly, though. Not doing a ton of damage to the Urukai that it was summoned on, but doing a fair amount, actually. The crossbows will live. They're picking off the pikemen quite nicely, though. And the Goblin Warrior is going in for the flank on the Lorian Archers, and they're doing a number on him. Looks like he's also a scavenger as well. So he's now getting paid to kill things, which is always nice. I believe it's HD Edition Gothamog? Or it's normal Gothamog, one of the two. Either way, he does look HD, so maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. I can't tell. <laughs> I thought my Gothmog always looked pretty good, so I don't know. 
Alright, Abra is going in for an attack here on Tico. Tico is busy attacking Samurai, who has got himself... Is that Threndle? It is indeed Threndle. There he is. Of course, Threndle in Rise of the Witch King does not have a mount. He's not going to be uh, getting on a elk mount anytime soon. Like 1.09 usually has him doing. <laughs> not usually, but can have him doing. I should say. Gothmog is very wounded. Running away there. Barely getting out. Mouth of Sarn is out as well. It looks like he's cleaning up nicely. Mouth of Sarn also has AoE, so he's doing good damage there, but he is going to need to get out of there. Thrandal is picking him off slowly, but surely. Thrandal is going to be deadly once he levels up. At least he even gets level 4. Deadeye is incredibly good. Let's see how Abra's attack on Tico's base is going here. I think he might have destroyed something, but it looks like. For the most part, his army has been defeated here. The Spider Riders and Goblin Warriors are going to finish off whatever remains there. I imagine Orc Warriors don't give too much experience. <laughs> like a single Orc Warrior, bold, to challenge the King of Mirkwood. I don't foresee him lasting too much longer, though. There we go, we got Summon Wildman <clears throat> from uh, Aber. So it looks like Platt is throwing down towers here. Defensive towers could be very useful. We have Lurts out in the field as well. Forever. He's going to start picking off the Orc Archers, which is very good. Lurts is good for picking off Archers. As you see, he one-shots them. So slowly but surely, he'll whittle them down from range, which is always what you want. Although Aber has... Solidifies his position here a bit. But of course all these arrow towers between the fortress, the arrow towers, and these archers are going to whittle down his army quite nicely and quickly. Also Gothmog and the Mouth of Sauron both having AoE damage as well. Cleaving their ways through all the armies of Eber. And like that, his army is gone. He's going to need a new one. Although it looks like he has a new one and it's over here on the right side of the map attacking on that front. Although his alerts probably should run. Yes, there he goes. Right, we look like we have an army of samurai over here. He's sending in some Mithlons. Do a little bit of damage. Although I don't foresee them living too much longer. There's a lot of goblin warriors there. Also got spider riders also. Can I just say I really like the addition of the armor on the spider riders. The HD edition in general. Pretty cool. I think it looks much, much nicer. It's a nice little interesting thing we got going here from Tico for his building situation. Abbott is probably going to lose his army here. Those archers just got trampled by spider riders, and Azog is ravaging the pikemen with the. Goblin warriors that remain there. So he didn't get too much done there, but there is no farms in this region. Tico's actually pretty low on farms, you gotta be. I just gotta be said. He's only got two. <laughs> so I can see why he's circling this one in buildings. But as soon as a power comes up that's AoE, like Dragon Strike or something, maybe. Or even Dragon. Or like a Flood or something. That's gonna be very devastating to his buildings because they're very clumped up so that might be a thing later on i'm okay, about to start on using his doubt ability which is incredibly useful especially against debuffing really strong urukai oh no gothamog is dead looks like lurch went carnage mode there and ravaged gothamog but he will pull out as it doesn't look like abra has a much in the way of army left here Samurai, on the other hand, is doing fairly well. Continuing to just get Mithlons and his Lorian archers and keeping them healed up with his Music Eladril. He's also going for an Eagle. Interesting. Eagle will actually be very useful against goblins. Because as you see, Tico is not focusing on goblin archers whatsoever. So it's going to absolutely destroy 
These guys, the only archers he'll have is the spider riders, and he only has one battalion of spider riders, so that's not going to be enough to stop an eagle, I can tell you that much for free. So that'll go quite well for him, actually. Ever utilizing the warg sentries there. Which do quite well, but only they can only do so much, of course. This isn't patch 1.09 where wargs have trample. Making the warg sentries incredibly OP, <laughs> I found. Ooh, aber has gone for Saruman. Very cool. That has potential for greatness. And I hope it gets utilized to its fullest. Because I always love Saruman being a savage. And being a beast as he is. There is Legolas. Which has this HD edition look. Of course, as you expect. The Hobbit armor. Alright, so there we go. I'm waiting for Saruman's Wizard Blast. We know it's coming. Boom! Yeah, there you go. And that does net him almost level 3. Now he has Fireball as well. He could hit the uh, Orc Arch with the Fireball if he so desired. Looks like he's opting not to do so. And it looks like Platt is going to pull back here and fight at his towers. Aber is going to retreat, not fight at the towers, because that would be unwise for him. He'll just take a lot of extra damage for no reason, because he can't get to these towers. And they'll just whittle away his army. So yeah, it looks like... Looks like Samurai is going for the uh, the heroes of the elves. There's Haldir. I'm very cool. Haldir has a very cool HD edition look, I think. There you go. It's always nicer to zoom in on the HD edition. <laughs> Goblin Warrior should be cleaned up fairly nicely here, though. It's gotta be said. Haldir has a very slow attack speed, doesn't he? Look at him. Now I can see why it was proposed to change it, because his, his bow attack speed is very slow. Especially when compared to other elves. He's like in slow-mo. <laughs> we gotta be a little bit careful, Thrindle. It's not incredibly tanky. Oh, we got Black Riders out for Platt. Black Riders are going to be the death of the elven heroes if Samurai is not careful. These Black Riders will absolutely destroy him. Ooh, there's this Cripple Strike Gothmog. The Legolas is about to find out how good the Black Riders truly are against heroes. And down he goes. Brutal death. Eagles, though, fairly effective against Black Riders, as they cannot hit him back, and they actually do AoE to the whole battalion. So he's going to need to get those Black Riders out of there ASAP, because the Eagle will absolutely annihilate them. A single Horaja Marcher <laughs> trying to save the Black Riders. Oh, and he retreated right into some Urukai pikemen. That wasn't good. I'm also noticing I'm not hearing a lot of unit sounds. Oh, jeez. Hello. Well, I heard Gothmog's unit sound. I can tell you that much. <laughs> Gothmog's dead, as is whatever was there. I'm assuming Aber's army, considering Saruman's standing there. But yeah, I'm not hearing the Black Riders screech death or anything like that, which is weird. Oh, well. Right, there is the Worm Summon. That is from... Platt. And that should get rid of this fortification of elves. Oh, Glyphrendel's out on the field as well. Yeah, that's going to force the samurai to retreats. That should allow the goblins to make a little bit of ground here. Although the eagle is still around, Azog should probably get out of there. Especially if Glyphrendel decides to show up and ruin his day with the rest of the elven heroes. That single Horde of March is still alive. Looks like Glorfindel is going to finish him. That's HG edition Glorfindel. Also, in case you weren't aware, you can actually destroy the little neutral structures here in uh, Buckland. If you get a catapult to bombard or area around these little neutral structures, they will actually crumble and go away. 
Which some players probably don't know. We have attack trolls out here from Platts. Lots of orcs and Harajim archers there. So, so he's got a pretty good, solid uh, group of troops here. But it looks like Aber's going for an attack on the back of his base. Although he's going to lose a lot of stuff in the meanwhile. Although it looks like Platt's doing a lot more damage to these catapults to his own units than he is to the enemy. The attack troll should clean up there. Once the attack trolls start leveling, things get nasty. Ooh, Arwen trying to run through an army of goblins. That's risky. Very risky. Abra has arrived here to help fend off the goblin hordes. And they will retreat. What levels are Arwen? If Arwen gets to level 4 or 6, rather, of course, she gets Flood. She can use, oh, she's chasing an Azog. With that glide attack. <laughs> what the hell was that? It's like it wasn't animating the run. Azog does get away, though. Azog is what level now? 8. Well, he gets his last ability at 6, of course. It's just experience, which is underused. But sometimes you don't want experienced troops against the enemy because they get more power points and such from them. So that's fair enough. Men have had a... <laughs> Isn't it Harad? Aber is now upgrading his army with, with armor on it. Although army with armor against the Tactrol still is not going to help too much. As the Tactrols are just beasting. This one's down though. Tactrols are so strong. The Pikes will bring him down if, if they get hit. It's just, they're getting smacked away. Gothmog gets up against some Urukai with heavy armor as well. Seem to be doing all right. Let's look at the Wildman Axlars with heavy armor. And now it looks like his base is being besieged a bit. There's a attack troll there. Should really get that attack troll on the archer line here. I'm not sure what Platt is doing with this attack troll. There he goes. And now we have Forge Blades upgrade on the Axlars. Oof. Which is quite damaging. So Tactrol will fall, though. Should probably take this Lumber Mill before he dies, I think. Nope, it's not. The ring has been dropped. Interesting. Could be uh, could be interesting. There's the Merkwoods in HD. You've probably already seen most of the units in HD because of the, uh, of course, I do my casts of 1.09 on HD edition, as well as I covered them a, a few times there. So until, really, you see, like, <laughs> I don't think there will be a single unit in this game besides Gothmog, maybe, in the Black Riders. But the Black Riders don't seem to have an HD texture as we have. No, they don't, in fact. I don't think there has been any Rise of Witch King specific units other than Gothmog that I've seen. As far as I'm aware. But that's because we haven't seen the uh, Half Troll Swordsman or Pikeman. Not the Pikeman, <laughs> just the Swordsman. But that's because, really, if you think about it, Rise of the Witch King doesn't actually add that many units to factions other than, obviously, Angmar. That's the entire faction. And the uh, bits of spattering that each other faction gets. Two to three units, maybe. Most factions don't get a new hero as well. But it looks like Thrando's leveling up nicely. He's got level 7 move on scene, which can be used to... Uh, give you guys stealth, which could be very useful if you use it. There's, of course, HD edition Elrond in his red Hobbit armor, which is awesome. Got all of that. Little Saruman, level 5. Once he gets to level 6, he gets Thunderbolt, which is incredibly powerful. Thunderbolt's arguably his best ability, other than obviously being able to steal an entire army. Permanently. Not an entire army, unless they're all like really. It's like a small circle, but still. You can take anything in a small circle. If they're clumped up, you time it right, you could take a whole army. So. That's it. They have to be worried about. This eagle is level 6. So he does have Wing Glass, which is unlocked at level 5. 
very similar to Drogoth Swing Blast. Because it will knock enemies under it down and do damage over time. It's very good, actually. Ooh, Saruman's getting some big strikes there. He's also got his Thunderbolt. And it looks like he's going to use it. Nice. Hitting those Haradra Marchers, killing half the battalion, and also a Catapult at the same time. I don't want to get out of there, though. Because he's not going to be 1v1ing an attack for one time soon. Although, with Lurch there, he should be okay, I think. And indeed, he is... And the attack troll falls. Very nice. Abra's army is building a strength. He's gotten going for upgrades, which will give him the edge over his opponent there. He is using fire arrows, but I don't think he's using armor or anything. I just heard a Mumik. Ah, very good. We got our Mumik out on the field for Platt. Very cool. I'm always excited to see a Mumik. Because it's my favorite units. Hooray. And we got lots of Merkwas here with King Thrindle. A lot of spider riders would be pretty uh pretty effective against the the elf player there, but it looks like Tico's opting not to do that. So jeez. So we're seeing a delayed version of the uh Fires of Doom. We're in a fire. It's Fires of Doom or in a fire, I can never remember. They will not fear Zog, I think. Uh, Summon Balrog is ready to be used for Tico. So that'll be pretty brutal when that happens. Ever's got himself fuel the fires. He's up to 20 power points. So he's getting close to a 25. There's Flood. Ready to be used for Samurai. There's Balrog ready. Uh, that's Tico's Balrog, of course. And that was Rain of Fire, that's what it's called. I should, I should remember Fires of Doom comes from Mount Doom. Comes from Sauron, I guess. But I can never remember. Well, Borlock's probably gonna do a number on the space. So I'm not sure why this building's on fire. Why is there such a fire under this Yurk pit? Borlock hasn't done any fire things yet. <laughs> I have no idea. If there's a fire brewing there, Tico should really micro his Balrog a little better. You don't want to use Balrog melee attack on a fort. Especially upgraded, it's not going to do anything. Oh, there's the Gorgoth Spire. A good amount of damage there. Abra's base seems to be in absolute chaos. Also, it looks like the ring has been claimed by Samurai, as he has a white eagle there. Unlocking the Collector's Edition features for his faction. Which, fun fact, in the new version of 2.02, when it can release this, that will be an optionable, optionable, optional <laughs> target uh, thing you can click to uh, activate in your fort if you want. So you can just click. Do I want HD edition or the special edition features? You click yes on the fort, and then it'll give you them. It's kind of cool. So it won't be linked to the ring anymore, which I think is good and bad, I guess. It's kind of neat when you get the ring and it gives you the special things over someone else who doesn't have them, but at the same time, everyone gets to benefit from the collector's edition special effects, so why not, eh? There's silver thorns on the army of the elves. Goblins are really not getting enough spider riders. I can't stress that enough. He also needs Watcher, and he really should have used his Balrog under the elven army. I think Tico probably made a mistake there. Because this is going to be horrendous for him to deal with. Except for giant AoE powers like Watcher or Balrog. Which would have dealt with that very easily. And hell, he could have even fire whipped King Thrindle and probably killed him. But now, now he's going to struggle. Especially with what little he has. So we'll see if Platt can help do any damage against the elves as well. If he moves that direction. He might not. He's dealing with Abra, of course, so it's not like he can just break off a chunk of his forces. If he sends a Mumik at the Elves, though, it is going to die very, very quickly. As archers. Good archers are really the way you deal with Mumiks. Other than flying units. And maybe, like, fire drakes. Fire drakes do the, deal with them very well, actually. But, of course, the enemy team doesn't have fire drakes or anything. But they do have an eagle. And eagles deal with those very, very good. You would think they wouldn't because they have archers on top, but they don't actually 
I mean, if you look at it, there's not that many archers on top. There's like, what, four, four archers on top that actually shoot? So, it's not going to do that much damage to your uh, eagle. Not You'll kill the Mumik way before the eagle will ever die. But as you see here, this is exactly what I was talking about. He's now kind of trapped in his base, being camped in by an army of Mirkwoods. We even have the Noldors. Oh shit, we have Noldors. Noldors do have an HD edition skin, on the other hand. And look at them. They're beautiful. Of course, looking like elves from the Last Alliance. Oh, they're so good. Unfortunately, they're getting wrecked by attack trolls and Mumix. Actually, crushed that elven army pretty nicely, it's gotta be said. Between units thrown at them, attack trolls and Mumix and such, they dealt with Samurai's army pretty nicely. You can be in place by Platts. Looks like there's an army there. We're seeing the delayed arrow volley. Looks like it did hit, though. Weakening the army of Aber. But severely. Sarmon's still level 6. Now he's level 7. I'm just being chased by an attack troll. <laughs> that would be a terrifying thing, being chased by an attack troll in real life. Of course, if attack troll existed in real life, I guess that'd be terrifying enough, wouldn't it? We have trolls in real life, but not attack trolls. We got internet trolls. Far less terrifying, it's gonna be said, but still. Level's hell here. Level 9. One more level gets a golden arrow. High damage attack that stuns enemy units. It's kinda good. Alright. Might invest in some Mythlons. At least one Mythlond, I'd say. Looks like Average decided to throw his forge here in the back of Samurai's base. I guess it's probably a safer spot. Tico went for Chila, but I don't know if I'd agree with that decision. <laughs> That money spent on Shelob could have been spent on a lot of spider riders. Mm. Like, he's really not using enough spider riders. One battalion is not going to take out an army of archers. Not even close. If he had, like, four battalions, he would absolutely decimate this elven army. Even three battalions. He does not, so he? Oh, jeez. And there is a lightning tower. Looks like it managed to kill the majority of the Mumik. Attack troll got whittled down a little bit as well. He's really friendly firing his uh, attack troll there. If the Sauron can get level 10, that could also be destructive. Sounds like he died again though. <laughs> so, not gonna happen. But he could. Forces of Aber are getting a bit wrecked here. Although, not as much as I'm sure Platt would like. As he still has his Saruman, he still has his alerts, and he still has some upgraded troops left to defend. This has got Ballista. And there is a Worm Summon from Tico. Gonna try and shut down this Siege Works, which is definitely a good call. Ah, there's a Barrage. There goes the rest of Aver's army. Brutal. Saruman, of course, can't do anything. Or even lurts because of this Mumik is here. Saruman can fireball when lightning storm, or thunderbolt rather, the Mumik, though. I'm pretty sure both of them. I don't think fireball would kill it, but thunderbolt would if it would hit. Looks like Platt is trying to break down the fortress of Aber. Slowly but surely, he's doing damage. It is upgraded with armor. So it is going to take some time. Down it goes. The Mumik has fallen. Thank you, Shadow. And now uh, he should be able to clean up these catapults, especially with the Elven heroes over here helping out. He's almost got the Isengard fort down to half armor. Half health. Shows how tanky it is, though, against mortal catapults. I think Mortal Catapults have less damage, though. I'm not sh that's That's completely speculation. 
Because they come that way, and they're cheaper, more spammable. But I could be entirely wrong. But I feel like they do have less damage than maybe a Dwarven Catapult. Upgraded? Maybe, maybe not. If you know, let me know. Oh, look at that. Look at that! Abra using the Extinguished Fire. And that's actually very useful when you have a Raging Fire, it turns out. So that's very good. Way to utilize game mechanics, Aber. I'm so proud of you. Alright. What do we have here? So we got Black Orcs with heavy armor. We got Herodrum Archers, Fire Arrows, Easterlings without heavy armor. Still good looking even without armor, though, aren't they? Easterling design is just so good. Loving it. Looks like Samurai is pushing in here on Tico, who doesn't seem to have anything. <gasps> there it is. Half-Troll Swordsman. There is the HD Edition Half-Troll Swordsman. Looks quite fearsome. And quite HD. Very cool. Alright. I think he'll be fine. I don't know if this is the right unit to go with. He should really be going with Mountain Giants. And spider riders. Oh, the mimic's been set ablaze. Oh dear. <laughs> Just like that, it falls flat. Nice. Just a little graphical glitch. Looks like Mordor is. Mordor is getting the better of this engagement, though. But if I had to say who was winning, I would definitely say the northern team is starting to win. Aber has been struggling on the defensive against Platt for a bit, but I don't feel like he's losing, per se. His fort has taken some damage, but he's still got his leveled up heroes. I mean, Saruman's level 8. Once he gets level 10, that's a game changer, really. Saruman level 10 is huge. But I do feel like the goblins are losing against the elves and have been... Pretty much most of the game. But, we'll see if Tico can pull it back. I don't think he's going to do what he needs to do to actually win against the elves. He's making the wrong unit choices. Is my opinion. I would throw down maybe two spider pits. Start pumping out spider rider spam. And go for... Uh, for that instead, and some mountain giants. Because mountain giants, of course, can throw at range. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I didn't foresee that. I forgot about that. Alright, Samurai's got himself Galadriel. Which I'm pretty sure does not. Like, she already looked pretty good. And there she is. Terrifying. And she, of course, has Nature's Wrath. This is a giant tornado and terrible fury, which is fear and just kick-ass ability in combat. So that's definitely going to seal the fate of Tico on the right side, I feel. As if uh, it wouldn't already. So we can see Samurai probably could have killed off Tico a while ago, I think. But he saved up 10 grand to get Galadriel, so... <laughs> Opting not to do so. And do that instead. And now it looks like he's going to push in on the bottom right here. With a bunch of heroes. Oh, is he going to do Terrible Fury right here and then move it on the fort? That's always good. Is he going straight for the fort with Galadriel? Oh, hello. Balrog has been summoned by Platts to try and help defend. Galadriel's actually taking a lot of damage already. There is the flood on the fort. The rest of the open heroes are going to try and go for the kill here. Oh wow. Are we using Hurt Flood as well? Sunflare going down? Holy shit. He's really throwing literally everything he has at that fort, and down it goes. He has Galadriel, two 25 point powers. Arwen's Flood. <laughs> it's crazy. I wonder if Restoration works on Galadriel. I highly doubt it. But maybe it does. Oh, look at that. Spider is trying to come out. Unfortunately, there's. Elrond's Whirlwind as well. Oh shit. 
Of course, not nearly as impressive as Gladiator's Whirlwind, but that's to be expected, isn't it? But it will do damage over time to whatever building it's on. That's why it's usually very good to use the Tornado onto a, onto a fortress, because it's literally unblockable damage that you cannot stop. And it will continue ticking down over time. But it looks like the base of uh, Tico has been just absolutely ravaged. Plat is going on crusade here, trying to push the elves back. Although Galadriel is still here. Albeit a diminished Galadriel. She has taken a lot of damage. I wonder how much worm does a Galadriel. Doesn't want to seem to hit it. Eh, a little bit. Not too much. Oh no, Glorfinger got killed by a Mumik. Such a terrible fate for such a charming individual. Yeah, it looks like Abra is pushing in on the base of Platt, who is now about to launch a Gorgoroth Spire. Ah, oh, perfect timing. Beautiful. Decimating the army of Abra. Abra's Sarma is very close to level 9. There's still a Mumik here. Killing the base. Looks like Thrandal does take him out. Oh, Thrandal's level 10. He's got Thorn of Vengeance. Extremely powerful single shot attack. And it is indeed a single very powerful shot attack, like it says. Very good for sniping heroes and such. Or big units like Mumix. It's uh, quite nice. Where the hell is Gothmog going? Gothmog's potentially going to try and save Mouth of Sauron? Gothmog against Lurts! I mean, Gothmog will win just because Mouth of Sauron is here as well. Actually, I think Gothmog wins anyway. So I'm noticing when he goes tomato mode, you can still see some color on him. That's kind of nice, actually. So HD Edition Rise of Witch King uh, Gothmog won't go full red. Like he'll still have the white outline, so you can still tell which team he's on. That's kind of nice, actually. I like that. Just in case you have a bunch of red-faced tomato Gothmogs on. There's the sniper shot from the Thrandal with the Thorn of Vengeance killing Gothmog instantly. Like I said, it does a lot of damage. And Gothmog was already wounded, of course. So, it was easy pickings, boys. And now Abra's bringing full might of Isengard out again. His basin's looking, uh, healed up and secure now. Looks like Tico is not dead yet. Samurai's toying with his food as he tends to do. Looks like he's opted not to kill his enemy right away and just keep playing around with uh, his heroes and such. Which I've noticed is actually a thing that he does often. <laughs> Any game you see Samurai in. He may end up trolling or toying with his, play his food. His prey. For his amusement. There's a summon dragon. It's going to start wrecking the base. But now it looks like we do have a fort up here for Tico in the back of Mordor's base. So at least he has that. He has his power usage again, which is also good. Looks like Platt still has Black Riders. Oh, these are fresh ones. A new horde of Black Riders. Probably not very good against a dragon, though. He's going to try and tank down the orc pits with this. Good thing about the dragon is he hits multiple things when he attacks. He does have his advantages over Balrog because of that. You could hit clumps much easier than Balrog. With just his normal attack. Although Balrog still has an AoE. As we all know. With the fire breath. Ooh. Did he just time that? Thunderbolt to kill the Black Riders instantly? I think he did. Beautiful ever. Sarmos Thunderbolt is incredibly good against Black Riders. If you can actually hit him with it, it's really, really good. As you see, it just decimates the battalion because it's AoE and very high damage. Which is really what you need to kill Black Riders. 
Damn goes the launcher. Expiring. Not before doing damage though. Is Galadriel still out? She is indeed. She also has her abilities. But it looks like Samurai is just going to whittle down the base here. Let's just admire the Noldors for a second. Oh yeah. Very cool. Alright, well, I think we can tell this is on a bit on a downward spiral. Now that Tico's base is basically gone. And of course, the ring hero purchased for the elves. Things are slowly but surely going very poorly for the southern team. And Samurai has brought his forces over as well. Ooh! Ring of fire going down. Destroying the Noldors, weakening the elven heroes. Not by too much, though. And of course, even if they do get weakened, Athelus is available for healing. And there we go. Platt has been defeated. And I sure. Tico will follow suit very shortly here, as he basically just has a port. <laughs> Not before summoning his worm, apparently. Trying to kill. Old Arwen. Arwen's flood does a good chunk of damage to the fortress. I wasn't aware it did that much. There you go, there's a reason to get Arwen if you didn't have one. Go for the fort with Arwen. For a finisher or something. Could be good. Elrond against Worm. Doesn't seem like Elrond wins particularly. And Thorn of Vengeance doesn't seem to do too much damage to the Worm as well. Still got quite a bit of life left. But this game is just about over here. Port needs to go down, and then of course the little buildings here and there. And that'll be it. That was a pretty good game though. It's on the left side. <laughs> I think Tico made some huge mistakes. By not getting us Spider Riders, basically. Or Mountain Giants. I think I saw one Mountain Giant in that entire game. And really, Mountain Giants are good against Elves in mass numbers. So there you go. That has been a uh, cast of the Rise of Witch King patch 2.02. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that, and I'll see you guys in the next cast. So, see you all next time.